so uh, welcome back. Um, so we've done uh, almost three videos um, trying to solve this differential equation um, using the reg regular perturbation method. Um, so uh, just as a reminder, uh, we have a second order differential equation, we have a small parameter epsilon, um, subject and, and y is the dependent variable, x is taken to be a spatial variable in this case, and these are the appropriate boundary conditions that y at x equals 0 is 0 and y at x equals 1 is 1. Um, so to big O epsilon square, we found our perturbation solution to be um, sine of x divided by sine of 1, 1 plus epsilon minus epsilon x to big O um, epsilon square. Now, uh, in order to see whether this solution is uh, correct, um, in this case we can do that because this is a, a second order linear differential equation which we can solve exactly subject to these boundary conditions. So let's just uh, do a quick check whether um, the solution is indeed correct or not. Um, so, uh, so how do we solve this differential equation? Um, uh, we, um, if, if you recall uh, one of the first videos that we did on differential, ordinary differential, when we started talking about differential equations, um, we, 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 uh, we started off by saying that we can make an ansatz that y of x is of the form e to the power of s of x. Uh, and that's because the exponential is an eigenfunction of the derivative operator. And so uh, this ansatz is, uh, is likely to satisfy the condition that the, dub, that the second derivative of this plus 2 epsilon times or some constant times the first derivative plus y itself is 0 uh, because uh, we want the derivatives and the function itself all to have the same functional form. So this is a very useful ansatz to make in, in, in such cases. Um, so if you make this ansatz, uh, we find that the second derivative, uh, so the first derivative y1 of x is s e to the power of sx and the second derivative is s squared e to the power of sx. And so this entire equation can be converted into an algebraic equation uh, of the form. Um, so y double prime will give us an s squared plus 2 epsilon. The, the first derivative will give us an s plus 1. And this entire is multiplied by e to the power of sx is 0. But uh, if x is in the range 0 to 1, it's finite. And if you're looking for s, uh, so, so we have to solve for the, for the parameter s. Um, so it, it, again, if s is not infinite, then the only possibility is that the quadratic equation is s square plus 2 epsilon s plus 1 is 0. And this gives us, um, this will give us two roots. And the roots are s is um, minus 2 epsilon plus minus 4 epsilon square minus 4 divided by 2. Uh, so we can cancel off a factor of 2 and since epsilon is much much less than 1 typically we can write it in a way where we bring out uh, the unit imaginary i uh, into the equation. So again uh, if you haven't, um, if, you, if you want to review rather complex numbers and analysis we'll sh uh, soon be uh, starting a video series co series covering complex numbers and, um, uh, and complex functions. but. Um, it's not necessary for this particular function because we, we can quickly convert into sines and cosines. But uh, for now, let, let's just write it down in a form. First of all, let's cancel the factors too. And then we can write this in the form minus epsilon plus minus i, I which is the unit imaginary, times square root 1 minus epsilon square. So we have two values s1 and 2, minus epsilon plus i square root 1 minus epsilon square and minus epsilon minus i square root 1 minus epsilon square where i itself is um, i is square root of minus 1. Okay, um, so, so the overall solution, so we have two values of s and so the solution y is a superposition of two solutions of the form. So we can write y the com of x. Again, this is, this is a so this is a homogeneous equation. So there's no forcing term on the right hand side, it's just zero. So the overall solution is two constants, uh, contains two constants, C1, e to the power of S1, which will, um, so let, let's just write, um, or maybe we can write in full. So it's uh, minus epsilon x uh, plus i square root one minus epsilon square x. So that's S1 plus 
c2 e to the power of minus epsilon x minus i square root 1 minus epsilon square x. So we have found two values of s 1 and 2 and the overall solution we have written as c1 e to the power of s1x plus c2 e to the power of s2x where s1 is minus epsilon plus i square root 1 minus epsilon and s2 is minus epsilon minus i square root 1 minus epsilon and, and there's a reason why uh, uh, why uh, I have separated minus epsilon x um, written separately minus epsilon x and this factor because you see that in both these terms e to the power of minus epsilon x is a common factor whereas the imaginary parts uh, appear with opposite signs. So this common factor we can take out and write this entire solution as uh, e to the power of minus epsilon x times uh, now we have a constant c1 e to the power of i square root 1 minus epsilon square x plus c2 e to the power of minus i square root 1 minus epsilon square x. So that's one way of expressing the solution. Uh, we still have to find out c1 and c2 but before we do that um, uh, if we have a solution of the form c1 e to the power of uh, i times some factor and e to the plus c2 times e to the power of minus minus i times the same factor these quantities can actually be combined and written in the form of instead of using complex exponential we can just write it as c1 sine of x plus c2 cosine of x which is what we, we have been doing so far when we were solving the second order uh, homogeneous differential equations for let's say the zeroth order solution and the first order solution. So, uh, so the, the reason for going through all these steps is also to review in case uh, review uh, how to solve a second order um, um, linear differential equation which is homogeneous and um, but 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 in any case so we can combine these two into a sine of x plus cosine of x and write our solution y of x as um, e to the power of minus epsilon x c1 sine of uh, square root 1 minus epsilon square x plus c2 cosine of square root 1 minus epsilon square x and essentially the way to see this is e to the power of i uh, times a constant times x can be expanded using Euler's expression where e to the power of i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta um, and so if we expand both of them in cosine theta cosine of think of this if you think of this as theta then cosine of theta plus i sine theta and from here we will get cosine of theta minus i sine theta and then we can combine the cosine and the sine uh, they will both have different constants so in front of the cosine we will have c1 uh, plus c2 and in uh, cosine of theta and then we'll have c1 um, i c1 minus i c2 sine of theta and those uh, essentially become our new constants. So maybe instead of writing this as c1 and c2 I should just write this as c1 uh, bar and c2 bar. So these are these c1 and c2 are different from this c1 and c2 but they are just constants we still need to figure out. Okay. Um, so now we need to uh, plug in the boundary conditions to solve for these constants. Um, now our interest here is basically to solve for um, the solutions, these solutions and compare it with the, uh, so essentially we have our exact solution once we just figure out C1 and C2. Um, maybe let's just do, do the complete solution first, that will be easier. So, so y at x equals 0 is 0, uh, which means that our first boundary condition gives us 0 is, uh, now e to the power of minus e0 is 1 and then sine of 0 is 0, so we have C2. So C2 is simply 0, okay. And now we use the second boundary condition that uh, y at x equals 1 is 1. So 1 is e to the power of minus epsilon uh, x is 1 and then we have c1 
sine of square root 1 minus epsilon square at x equals 1. Okay. So this gives us c1 is 1 divided by exponential to the power of minus epsilon which we can write as e to the power of epsilon divided by sine square root 1 minus epsilon square. Okay. Now, um, so the overall solution for our equation is yx is e to the power of minus epsilon x minus epsilon x uh, times sine of square root 1 minus epsilon x divided by sine of square root 1 minus epsilon square and then we have a factor e to the power of epsilon. So this is c1 times e to the minus epsilon x sine of square root 1 minus epsilon square x. So c1 is this times the function itself. Um, now if you are working to big O epsilon square, uh, notice that if we expand this square root in uh, square root function in powers of epsilon, we will have 1 minus epsilon square divided by 2. So our leading order term uh, will have an epsilon square. Likewise here, our leading order term will have an epsilon square. So, so we should actually get rid of this epsilon square if you are working to order big O square, big O, big epsilon, big O epsilon square. And that will give us the solution. Um, basically, we should just get rid of the 1 here, 1 minus epsilon square and just write this as sine of 1 and get rid of epsilon square here and just write this as sine of x. Okay. And so this leaves us with the solution. Um, sine of x divided by sine of 1 times e to the power of epsilon minus epsilon x. Epsilon, we can write this as 1 or oh, just sorry about this brackets. So we have e to the power of epsilon 1 minus x. So 1 minus x times epsilon. And again, we have an exponential to the, uh, ex e is the exponential uh, raised to the power of 1 minus x times epsilon, which has an epsilon here. So we should expand this term also to leading order in epsilon. Um, and this will give us, so the expansion for sine of, uh, the, the expansion for the exponential is, um, maybe we can write it here. So e to the power of, uh, 1 minus x epsilon for small epsilon can be approximated as 1 plus 1 minus x epsilon to big O epsilon square. And again, this is basically a power series expansion of the exponential for small uh, values of the uh, the power that is raised to ex the, the, the exponent. So, um, so if you recall a general expansion for the exponential, for e to the power of y where y is small, this is of the form y, 1 plus y plus y squared divided by 2 factorial and higher order terms. So we'll just retain the first order term up to epsilon. And so um, the solution here expanded to leading order in epsilon assumes the form sine of x times 1 plus epsilon minus epsilon x. Okay, and now we can compare this with uh, our perturbation solution and see that our the solution that we got from regular perturbation methods was sin x divided by sin 1, 1 plus epsilon minus epsilon x, which is exactly the one that we get by solving the equation completely and then expanding all the sort of uh, terms that have an epsilon to leading order in, in a power series expansion to leading order in epsilon. Um, so, uh, so but this is this is this is a good check, uh, and um, um, so yeah, I think uh, this is bas the basic sort of formalism to apply regular perturbation method to ordinary differential equations wherever we can apply them, um, and uh, hope uh, it was of some use. Um, see you. Uh,
uh, with so so now we'll sort of also try to solve the other version of this equation with an epsilon where the epsilon multiplies the highest derivative term and that will uh, lead us into some new territories um, so uh, yeah see you soon uh, thanks for watching <laughs>